Hi folks, and welcome to a quick look at picture processing in Linux. This is one of those areas where, rather than suffering from a dearth of software, you could say that perhaps there's too many packages to pick from. So what I'm going to do, rather than introduce you to them all, I'm just going to show you my workflow, and you can use that as a springboard for your own adventures. I'm also not going to go into the drawing programs either. We're just going to stay with pictures. The most common thing that I'm doing these days is taking pictures that I've taken with my mobile phone, my camera, and just uploading them to social media. And for that, you don't need to load a piece of heavy software. I go for something that's called Gwenview. Now, Gwenview, despite being quite light, is reasonably powerful when it comes to the basic operations. Indeed, rather than just PNGs and JPEGs and that sort of thing, it also handles uh, RAW files from some cameras. I don't think it's using specific RAW filters. I think it's using some general logic to pull the image out of the RAW files. But anyway, as you can see on the bottom left hand corner, there's a few tabs. You have folders, you have information, and you have operations. The basic operations, such as crop and resize, are here, and they're relatively easy to use. Indeed, I usually use the keyboard shortcuts. Uh, once you've uh, cropped your image, um, then you've uh, resized it. You've also got the keep aspect ratio. Uh, you can also save the image in a number of formats. Down on the bottom right, you can see you've got fit, which is zoom to fit, 100%, or you can actually control the zoom directly. At the top right, you then have save or save as. So you can either save over the original, or you can save it as a number of different formats, which includes the common ones, PNG, JPEG, JPEG 2000, TIFF, uh, BMP, if you want to use that, as well as PCX. But that's down to you. I'm just going to undo these changes for a sec. You also have mirror, flip, and the, the, the usual kinds of things that I use. You also have a browse function, which is quite useful for sorting through the images at the end of the day. And if you zoom up the browse windows, um, typically when I come back, anything which is um, especially odd, I can just immediately select from here and potentially bin it. So I can go through a large number of images in quite short order and, and get the obvious failures out of the collection. Some people keep image every image they shoot, but that's not me. As you can see, this is handling PEF files from my Pentax K20D camera. Now that one's about 10 years old-ish, so there's no surprise that it can handle those. But it can also handle the K2S. <laughs> so yeah, these are the raw images straight from the camera. Uh, it can take them in, it can use them. And uh, I can resize these uh, 100%. There you go. Now, there's the obvious question of if this is taking in um, through a generic RAW filter, is it actually able to handle the color profile of the camera? Now, the answer is probably no. I couldn't tell you for certain. But um, for me, my level of photography, this is doing me just fine. So Gwenview is handling many things for me, uh, straight off it, straight off the cuff. And uh, indeed, at the top, you can see you can just go back um, by just selecting uh, selecting one of the folders that's up here. I can just select Home or Pictures, and hey presto, I'm back at that location. So a chunk of my everyday image processing is done in Gwenview, no problem. Now, <laughs> there is another program called Digicam, and I suppose that you could uh, say that it's the equivalent of Lightroom to a degree. Uh, Gwenview, I think, is just Linux only. I don't think it's cross-platform, and I don't think that um, Digicam is cross-view, uh, cross-platform either. Now, Digicam actually keeps a database of thumbnails, and it also keeps a database of ratings if you um, rate your pictures. 
uh, it'll keep that as well. Now, <laughs> how does this work? Uh, there's actually a database file going on. You can see them stored here. And indeed, under the settings, when you configure Digicam, you can actually tell it where to store the database and uh, what type uh, of database to store. The default is with SQLite, which I think is, uh, this one is built into Digi Digicam, I believe. You can also use some others. Um, I'd stay with anything that comes with the package myself and you can tell it where to store the database. Now this sort of feature is useful. I, I don't know how many others have had the same experience that I've had, but you know, you've come home with your image collection, you've dutifully rated them, uh, tagged them and all that, that stuff. And at some point along the line, the operating system has gone west and uh, yeah, you've lost all that database. Now, you can also put this database, I believe, on a mounted share. So you could even have a USB drive. And so long as it's mounted to the file system, you should be able to put the database there. Um, even on a remote file system, which is mounted uh, on the Linux file system, you should be able to use that. However, what you can't do is use a remotely um, referenced file system. Uh, in other words, um, a file system on a server which is not directly mounted into the Linux file structure. That allows you a few more options. Me, personally, I still don't use it due to many, many years uh, of having my fingers bitten by putting all the, uh, all the details in and then losing them later down the line. As you can see on the left, I tend to sort my pictures and file them by folder name. They're all folder named by date with the added zeros so that they're all sorted correctly. So it makes it easier for me to go to um, a particular folder for a particular shot. Now, you do have collections and the collection settings in here. Um, you can add various different collections, um, local collections, removable media or network shares, which dictate how um, Digicam handles the database thumbnails for the collections. Um, album view, you can uh, show the various options and the behavior for how you want the album view to behave. You've got album categories, you can add your categories in the rest, you've got the tool tips, uh, metadata, all, you've got all sorts of stuff. You can choose your editor window, um, various bits and pieces. There's quite a few uh, configuration options in here. But uh, at the basic end of this, it's um, what can you say? It's it's sort of equivalent of Lightroom. You got your thumbnails, which you can also go up in size with. I think no active process. And uh, again, uh, because you can get them up to a reasonable size. When I'm dealing um, with some of the raw files, I'll look at them in here rather than Gwen view, um, because I sometimes I also want to do batch processing, and that's something you can do in here. Uh, Let's just uh, take one image, uh, this one. Uh, let's just go into edit with here. And there we have it in the editor. Uh, you got the usual stuff. Um, you can also configure these toolbars uh, for various tools. Like um, uh, <laughs> rotate right, I can add in uh, and apply. So as you'll see, it's now come up there. Um, you've got all sorts of different tools that you can add into your toolbar, but you have all the different effects and options. Transform, resize, crop ratio, enhance, blur, sharpen, noise reduction, effects, all that sort of stuff. Um, you can uh, do a number of things in here. Uh, levels adjust, curve adjust, and you've got the shortcut uh, codes. It all comes down to the more you use it, like anything, the more you'll get to familiar with the shortcuts. It's all down to actually using it and getting familiar with it. The other thing it has is um, a batch processing tool. Uh, let's say I just pick those, for example, and I will add them in the batch queue manager to a new queue. Here we are, batch queue manager. Uh, this is the queue, queue number one, what we're going to, what we've got in there. The target settings, in this case, we're going to use the original album 
uh, we have file renaming options, behavior, and raw decoding. So we have a number of, whoops, <laughs> number of paths. Um, you've got uh, some behavioral options here, uh, which are quite technical. But the key one is the control panel here. And here we have the base tools. You're going to drag the various tools that you want to assign uh, up in there. You can do conversions, sharpen image, noise reductions, uh, image resize, for example, uh, JPEG conversions, PNG, TIFF, whatever you want to convert to. And these are the assigned tools that each of these images in the queue will go through. So you can adjust the color balance if you want, uh, convert to 16 bits, uh, sharpen the image. Uh, you can adjust the sharpness or whatever you want to do. Medium, big, use custom length, and it'll assign it to, I think, the longest edge. You can convert to JPEG. You've got uh, the various settings for each tool. And then when you hit the run button, it will process all those images. Um, and obviously it will do them with RAW as well. The one thing that I don't think the Digicam handles is the um, newest uh, raw image files. The KS2, I think, is now about a year old. But it, uh, yeah. Oh, yes, you can see them here. You can see the thumbnails. But if I try and edit them, um, then it has a problem. <laughs> now, raw processing. Um, Again, this is one of the issues of dealing with open source software in that you don't have the response typically of a commercial software house. So you can see that uh, we have uh, DC RAW, which is one of the RAW processing engines which is being used. And uh, Dave Coffin, I think, is uh, managing this. Now you have the combination of things here. Uh, these further down here is the supported cameras. And yes, you can see that the Pentax KS2 is now in this list. Uh, this supports quite a number of cameras. Uh, the KS2 is there, but it isn't because this is, um, this is version 9.22, I think, something like that. It is quite recent. And because Mint runs a little bit behind the time, if I ask DC Raw in here, it will tell me that the version it's running is 9.19. So the version of DC Raw that's coming out with Mint is a little behind um, what's in some of the other repos. But when DC Raw um, gets updated, I'll expect it to be able to handle the KS2s uh, or the K2S. Uh, whichever whichever the code the camera is, it should be able to handle them in due course. It's just going to be down to having a bit of patience. When it comes to raw processing, um, you have a number of other options. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is just open one of these in a system called, uh, where is it? <laughs> UF Raw. And UF Raw is a powerful raw processing tool. And um, I think this one's memorized the last lot. Uh, I'm just going to reset this. I was messing around with it earlier. <laughs> you have camera white balance, manual white balance, auto, uh, all the rest of it. And you can adjust the tools as you wish for white balance, yada, yada. Uh, scale. Let's bring this up to a, a bit. Uh, let's bring this up to 100% so you can see what's going on a bit better and the detail. So you have uh, your temperature adjustment, you have your green adjustment. Let's just bring that back to standard because otherwise it'll get a bit messy. You can see the histogram live down in the bottom. You can adjust your lightness. Um, and you can convert to grayscale using various different uh, options, including channel mixing. Uh, you can view the separate channels. It's quite a powerful piece of kit. And this is working right off the raw file. There are some profile uh, files around for different cameras and you can preload those into UF RAW. I don't think, again, because it's open source, you're relying on other people doing this if you haven't got the skills yourself. And um, for some cameras, you'll just never find the profiles. But that's how it goes. 
you've also got the curve adjustment so you can adjust the curve to your uh, heart's content <laughs> uh, yeah you can really go a bit bananas with this <coughs> uh, you've got a uh, color matrix gamma luminescent you can mess around with this to your heart's content really uh, contrast linear curve uh, you know you got all that sort of stuff going on uh, what is that color picker I don't know what's going on there you also have some basic aspects ratio crop um, shrink orientation basic controls in here uh, path whatever basic exif and uh, the long story short is UF raw allows you to really um, get the picture as you want it before you load it into the GIMP you can save it from here if you wish um, you can save the file if I save that it would just save it out probably as a JPEG and that'll jump back to Digicam and show me the other image but I'm just going to open that up with UF raw again and we're going to jump into GIMP now GIMP has had a bit of a slow development because again open source however uh, one of the oft questions is does it support 16-bit and the answer is now yes it does um, this article was from 2012 um, you can probably read that for yourself but um, uh, it's now capable not only of 16-bit color per channel it's also capable of 32-bit color per channel that's also available as well as 16 13 2 bit floating point uh, it's not in 2.8 but will come in GIMP 2.10 so we're probably running GIMP 2.10 about now so anyway we have our image as we want it we're now going to load it in GIMP now GIMP is the really heavy duty image uh, editing process uh, program sort of the equivalent of Photoshop you can see you've got the zoom down in near the bottom left and I can ad either adjust it by hovering over it and uh, adjusting with a scroll wheel or anything like that <clears throat> it's got two modes the default is uh, you can see it in single window mode at the moment uh, which is whereas many of the tools uh, are docked on the left the images themselves are docked on the right uh, but if I take this off to its default um, you can see that it's uh, its default is to have a separate window for each image that you have opened and I'm just going to use UF RAW or well, might as well if we open it straight in GIMP if we open a RAW straight in GIMP what GIMP will do is it will kick off UF RAW automatically uh, because it will then give you the option of adjusting this before you import it note that we've got the OK button here rather than the opening GIMP and save button down at the bottom right because it knows that this is going to go straight into GIMP and we now have two windows one for that one and one for that and they are showing up as separate tasks down in the taskbar if we flip this into single window mode you'll see that we now have tabs at the top for each window that we're editing and we can adjust the zoom as we wish now I'm not going to take you into all the detail of operating in GIMP it's a very powerful package but like any other package it requires um, a bit of time to get used to um, the more powerful they are the more time they take but the one thing about GIMP and I think UF RAW also is that they are cross-platform so if you want a powerful tool um, but you don't want to use Photoshop and you don't want to use their web version then GIMP is um, oh, pardon me, a viable alternative it's just a case of getting stuck in with the tutorials and learning what it can do one of the handier things that I use is um, the rotate tool uh, what I do is rotate and I go for corrective which is backwards and when I then click um, I get a grid and I can align the grid to wherever the line I want uh, let's just add a few more extra lines here so it gives me a bit more detail let's zoom in I'm just doing this arbitrarily of course and I want to line the image up with the coastline for example this is a nonsense thing to do it's just, just to show you what I can do and I'm just lining that grid line up and when I hit rotate 
uh, pink it'll rotate the image and line it up for me <coughs> and that's done um, <laughs> obviously it's not that good because the coastline itself isn't exactly a straight line let's just try that again I rotate corrective backwards uh, let's just do something a bit more dramatic so it's a little more obvious what it's done <coughs> uh, this makes no sense at all it's just to show you what I do really uh, normal forward corrective backwards yeah normal forwards am I using the wrong one here yes I think I may actually be using the wrong one corrective backward or did they switch this around at some point? No, it was right in the first place. <laughs> ah, corrective is backwards. It would make more sense if I actually chose a picture which had a straight line in it. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's typically what I use. You can see that when you use such tools, you then get um, gray sections which is where the image is rotated, but that's one of the things you've got to live with. You've also got flip perspective tool. You can adjust the perspective in here, shear tool, uh, scale tool, all the usual stuff, the nice selections like a free select, a fuzzy select, select by color, scissors select tool, a foreground select tool. You've got the stamp, the healing tool, um, perspective clone tool, blur, sharpen, you've got quite a lot in here. On the right side you've also got the layers, you've got channels, paths, undo history, you've got different um, brushes and all the rest of it, you know, gah, I mean what can I say, it, there is more power here in the GIMP than I will ever use, um, but it comes down to, I'll just discard the changes there, it comes down to what you need to do ultimately. Are there various other bits and pieces that you can do with pictures? Um, yep, you've got the usual stuff. Um, as you can see, there's so much things, you can, so many things you can do. You've got Inkscape here. Um, you've got Blender, which is the full 3D animation package. Luminance HDR. So you've got a, a HDR processing uh, image engine in here. Um, LibreOffice comes with a draw package. You've got Ocular for dealing with PDFs. Um, there's a load of stuff in here. And uh, I've cut this down, <laughs> remember. But there you go. That's uh, a brief look into my image uh, processing uh, workflow. Yeah, I couldn't even think of the word there then. So yeah, that's the workflow. Uh, there's plenty of stuff in here and it's just a case really of getting used to them and uh, spending some time with them, particularly the GIMP and UF RAW because they are cross-platform and uh, they work surprisingly well. But you've just got to remember that when you're dealing with open source software, it's sometimes slower to respond than, um, uh, than commercial software. You can sort of shut uh, shortcut that uh, if you deal with some of the common cameras like uh, not many people are shooting with the Pentax stuff so I find that um, support for that does take a bit longer than others but you know when you are dealing with the generic uh, processing engine in Gwenview that's perfectly enough for me for the majority of things that I want to do and I can save the detailed stuff for uh, some months down the line when things eventually get supported. So there you are. There's a brief look. Hope that helps. Um, yeah, the other thing about my workflow is that I do tend to name things by folder and have them sorted by folder rather than rely on the databases and uh, other methods because that allows me to go straight to a particular collection. Catch you later. Bye for now.